so far in 1967, the number of U.S. troops killed in Vietnam has nearly doubled. Air power is the one thing we most conspicuously have, and the enemy has not. During that period of time, they decided to escalate the air war over North Vietnam. We started striking targets inside Hanoi, which we had never done before. I got over the target and rolled in, and just as I released my bombs, a missile took the wing off the airplane. So I ejected. When I hit the airstream, it broke my arms and also my leg. Strangely enough, I landed in a lake in the center of the city of Hanoi. Someone took a picture of the Vietnamese pulling me out of the water and they were not happy. One of them stabbed me with a bayonet and another one smashed my shoulder. And then some North Vietnamese army came and they took me to the prison camp that we called the Hanoi Hilton. Yesterday over Hanoi, three American planes were shot down and at least two of their pilots captured. One of them was Lieutenant Commander John McCain Bird the son of the U.S. Naval commander in Europe. It's hard to describe the military heritage of my family. Yes, my dad was worried about me, but the fact is he knew that McCain's were doing what McCain's were bred to do. And if it takes you into harm's way, that is our profession. The injuries that I experienced were severe, and they said, We'll give you medical help if you'll give us information. I said, I can't. A few hours later, the interrogator came in and said, your father is a big admiral. And I said, yes. He said, we're going to take you to the hospital. One day, the interrogator came in and he said, our doctors tell me that you are not getting well. They took me into a room with two other Americans. They wanted me to die there rather than in the hospital. And those two literally nursed me back to health. And the love and affection that both of those guys bestowed on me was something I will never, ever forget. But as soon as the Vietnamese found out I could walk, the next day I found myself alone in the cell. I was about two and a half years in solitary confinement. Solitary confinement's great strength is it makes the person feel alone. And when you're alone, then you don't have the encouragement, the camaraderie, the strength. There's a reason why throughout history they've used solitary confinement. And then one day I was taken up to interrogation. There was a guy there, erudite, spoke perfect French, perfect English. I sat down and there was a cigarettes and there was tea and, and finally he said uh, well you know everybody wants you to go home because the doctors say that you can't live and i said our code of conduct says that we go by order of capture he said except for sick and injured and i said but i'm not that sick and injured i'm getting better i can get around and i know what this is i know it's for propaganda and he kicked over the chair behind him and he said, they taught you too well, and walked out and slammed the door, leaving me and one of the interrogators dead silence for about two minutes. And he said, things will be very bad for you now, McCain. And the fun began. They were really, really rough. I mean, to the point where they rebroke my arm. They did all kinds of, of stuff. It was so bad that I thought I was going to die, and so I wrote out a confession, a war crimes confession. And I will be ashamed and embarrassed about that for my whole life. After about four years, the beating stopped, and there was clearly a change in policy towards the prisoners. All of a sudden, on the 18th of December, the whole sky just lit up with explosions. And from then, round the clock, bombing. 
The Christmas bombing was the use of B-52s against tactical targets in Hanoi. We had reached a point where only a shocking event would show to them that we were absolutely determined to bring the war to a conclusion. When that bombing was over, there was a very strange silence and then an announcement on the radio that on the, that they were gonna they were gonna sign an agreement to end the war. A few days later, all the prisoners were called out and the commanding officer of the camp read off the provisions of the settlement. And one of the part of the settlement is prisoners will be returned by order of capture. While we were waiting, they said, McCain, come in, we need to talk to you. And there was about eight Vietnamese in this room, officers, and they had a tape recorder. And they said, McCain, you are gonna be leaving now and we saved your life, as you know. Don't you wanna have a, a, a parting uh, message of thanks for the doctors who took such care, good care of you? And I looked at them and I said, you want me to thank the doctors? They say, yeah. Well, first of all, I'd like to say, where the fuck have you been for the last five years? Could I say that? Going home was something that we'd looked forward to for so many years. I hate to tell you, but it was almost anticlimactic. Been waiting so long for it. In some ways, it was almost hard to believe we were going to do it. Nobody cheered until the airplane actually lifted off the ground and the landing gear was retracted. I remember really clearly him stepping off that plane into Clark Airfield. And I'll tell you, when he appeared in that hatchway, it was hard. Lieutenant Commander John S. McCain, third, United States Navy. His wife Carol, sons Douglas and Andrew, and daughter Sydney live in Orange Park, Florida. <laughs>